Sprite Factory includes an animatable box collider collision system that allows you to animate a box collider along with your animation of the sprite. So what this is useful for is, for an example, this character will punch the other character and the the way the hit is detected is by using a box collider that's animated along with his punch. So let me just show you that. So he walks over and he punches him. So what's going on here? If we look at this in the scene mode while the game plays, let's just split this here, you'll, it'll be a little more clear what's going on. This character on the left side has two colliders. He's got his hit collider, which is a static collider that just follows the character around, doesn't change shape or size, doesn't animate, and it's got his attack trigger, which is another box collider which is set to trigger. It has a rigid body as well. And this box collider animates along with the sprite animation. So if I if I play this, you can watch this, the box collider animate. See how it's changing shape and size and, and enabling and disabling. Right now it's disabled because he's not punching, but when he punches it's enabled and the shape changes to accommodate his arm. This is very easy to set up in Sprite Factory. Let me show you how, how I did it. So if we go into the Sprite Factory editor and click on the Master Sprite, if we look at the punch animation, you can see it has six frames of animation. Well, Right here under Colliders, if you press Edit, you will see a list of the colliders that will be created for this sprite. So right now I've already set up two colliders. One's a hit collider, one is attack trigger. So on the right side you see the properties of the collider. You see the name, the color, the layer it's on, and various properties of the box collider and rigid body, which correspond to the equivalents in the Unity box colliders. So this hit collider is a static collider. You see it's not animated and you see it's got a, a Z size of 1 so this is the depth of the of the box and the center of Z is 0 so that's aligned to the to the sprite plane. It's not a trigger and it has no physics material. We are using a rigid body. We're using a kinematic rigid body with no gravity and all these other settings are just default. So if we look at this attack trigger here this is the one that was used for the punch. This is an animated collider. You see this checkbox says animated colliders. It's on a, it's also on a, it's a different layer which I've set up for uh, layer based collision detection. Um, it also uses a rigid body. It's also kinematic and we've set it to a trigger right here. So these two colliders are all that's needed to achieve what I showed you earlier. Let me close this window and because this character has colliders set up in him, you can edit the colliders for the animation. Right here, you see collider frame properties, edit collider none. We can choose one of these colliders to edit. So this S means it's a static collider. So this static collider, is, the hit collider, is, is always the same shape on every frame of animation. You can see it doesn't change, doesn't move. You could make it move if you made it an animated collider, but I just chose to use static for this example. And on the punch, it always stays the same shape as well. So if we go change to the other collider, the attack trigger, this is different. The attack trigger uh, changes shape depending on the animation. And so obviously we're not going to attack in a stand or a walk or any of those frames, but in the punch we do have an attack. And so we see on punch frame zero, the collider is disabled. It's not on. It's, it's not going to show up, so it's not going to contact anything. But if we go step through the frames, you can see now it's been enabled. You see this purple box here. That represents the box collider. It's enabled in this frame, and it matches his arm shape so that you get an accurate punch. In this frame, it stays the same. This frame, it's, it's shrunk up a little bit to match his arm. So it's on for three frames of this animation. And if this box collider connects with the other character's hit collider, then we register a hit. So you see on the other, the other punch, it's the same way. The box collider animates. So you basically animate the box collider frame by frame in this frame editor here. And you do that by 
you can either change the shape of the box by using these numbers here it could be a little cumbersome or you can just drag the corner points and sh and make it shaped correctly to whatever whatever the sprite is doing you can enable or disable the box collider in in different frames by clicking this button very simple so once we've had once we've set all that up you have what we what I was showing you earlier where the character where you're using the colli the animated collider system to make a simple fighting game obviously there are many other uses for animated box colliders and I'll leave that up to you to figure out what you want to do with them but this system makes it a lot easier to to do some of the more traditional 2D game styles from the past than just using Unity's built-in colliders. Now I want to show you that these colliders actually these colliders are generated on a wake when you uh, run the game or when you instantiate a sprite. Right now you see the character has no no sub objects. There's no children in, on this game object. When I press play you will see each component has been created automatically. The the trigger, the hit collider, and a locator, which I'll talk about in another, another video. But these colliders are handled automatically by Sprite Factory and they're created for you. You don't have to do anything other than just set them up in the Sprite Factory editor and you're good to go. So now that the collider is set up in this character, we have to do something with the collision. We have to be able to detect when the collision happens and do something on this character. So on this character I've set up a small script uh, called SF Demo Bad Guy. And this script shows how you can detect a collision through Sprite Factory's animated box collider system. So let's just open, let me open that script here and show you what it is. It's extremely simple here. This script is just one function basically. On trigger enter sprite. So it's just like a standard unity on trigger enter except it has sprite at the end. And what this does is <coughs> the the sprite will call send message on all components attached to it and if one has uh, on trigger enter sprite it will call that function and pass this collision data to that function and you can use that collision data to do something so in this case in this case there's absolutely nothing going on beyond just detecting any collision and then playing the get hit animation in the enemy but in most situations you'd probably want to, to uh, get some data about the collision and then determine what to do. So there's various uh, variables here which are in collision data that you can use to find out where this collision is coming from. Now object value is it's a it's a variable of type object which the contents of which change depending on which which function is called whether it's on trigger enter on collision enter on mouse enter so in the case of on trigger enter sprite, the object value contains uh, collision type data. So Unity's collision type is used here. So this collision here contains information about the collision that happened see the unity documentation for more information about the, the collision class but you can get information like the collider that collided with this sprite you can get you know the game object that collided with it various other other pieces of information you can use this to determine exactly what collided with this uh, with this sprite and what to do when that collision takes place. So besides on trigger enter sprite there are other functions available. So let me go over to the documentation here and if you go to runtime classes sprite collider lists all of the, the 
functions. These messages are the same messages that are sent by Unity Colliders. And if you go into one of these, you can see details about how it works and what, what data is passed. This animated box collider system provides an easy way to create very traditional 2D games uh, with, a, a, with collision detection. It may not fit the needs of every game, such as some physics games where you say you have a character that needs to roll around on a, on a tilting platform or something, but you can certainly mix and match this system with Unity's built-in colliders.